and amen. May we stand today. Hallelujah. amazing grace hallelujah while well, we thank him we praise him with all of our hearts amen and amen and amen do you love him today praise the name of the Lord do you thank God for his presence amen amen we're so happy to be gathered like this in his presence we thank God amen for his goodness God bless you all welcome in a special way and if you have your Bibles, we'd like to turn to Psalm chapter 71 for a scripture reading. Amen. Before we start our song service, amen, and see what the Lord will do today. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Psalm chapter 71. We want to read from 1 to 8 inclusively. Amen. Hallelujah. And it says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust? Let me never be put to confusion. <clears throat> Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For thou art my hope, O Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. By thee have I been holding up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. May God add rich in blessing to the word of the Lord today. Amen. I invite you to lift your hands now where you are. And just begin to surround yourself. Just begin to invite his presence among you, around you. Amen. With your praises and with your worship. Oh, hallelujah. You get ready to pray and call upon the name of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 
You can give me a key for that song. I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are gathered here today, Lord. Lord, in your presence where there's fullness of joy, Lord Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that has been upon your people, Lord, ministering to us, Father. Ministering to us in this convention, Lord. Won't you continue to move in a mighty way? Bless our hearts as we wait upon you, Lord Father. Lord, we know that you are able to do all that you said you would do in your word, Lord Father. Confirm your promises to us. Bless your people, Lord Father, during this convention, Lord. And Lord, we never leave the same way we come. But Lord, we leave with, Lord, a greater desire, Lord. We leave with a flame of fire in our souls. Even the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Lord Father, to make us ready for the rapture. Grant it, Almighty God. Bless your people now. Bless the time of singing, the, the greetings, your, your ministering of your word. We give it all over to you now, Lord, for your glory. Have your way in us, we pray. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Aren't you giving praise and glory? We'll sing this song. Oh, I say yes, Lord. I say yes. Oh, to your will, Lord. Oh, I say yes. Where you lead me. I say yes. Oh, can you lift your hands and sing? I say yes. Hallelujah. Oh, I say yes. Oh, to your will. Hallelujah. Oh, I say yes. Where you lead me, oh. more time with every hand lifted lift your hearts before him hallelujah i say yes hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah oh i say yes hallelujah hallelujah oh i say yes lord oh where you lead me and where Shout of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, say yes to his will. I say yes to his word, to his promises. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Do you feel that way today? Amen and amen. Well, you may have your seats briefly. Amen. We'd like to call on a special at this time. Amen. So as they come and worship, you enter in and may the Lord richly bless you. Praise God as we continue in his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Love one another above everything. Love one another. Don't, no matter what the devil tries to say, now you're all one great big sweet group now. But remember my warning. See? Satan won't let that stay that way. No, sir. He'll shoot everything if he has to bring somebody in to make his target. Hmm? He'll bring some critic, unbeliever in and set him down, causing the fellowship with the other, quietness and things. Then he'll shoot that guy with some kind of poison stuff and he'll start through the church with it. Don't you take sides with it. Don't you have nothing to do with anything else. You stay right, loving and sweet and kind to one another. Pray for that man that he'll be saved too, or that woman or ever who it is. Pray for them and stick one with another and stay with your pastor. See? He's the shepherd and you give him respect. He'll lead you through. And because he's ordained of God to do so.
We gotta love one another Saying nice things about each other Backs right close to each other Don't let tones of bitterness come and take control of your heart Christ is the mystery of God To hold up our past, like Caleb and Joshua, we got to stay, pray, and be spectators. feel that way today you appreciate that glory to god hallelujah amen thank you lord oh hallelujah hallelujah what a testimony in song glory to god may god richly bless you amen in jesus name we pray hallelujah amen give me a key for that song it's the life behind the name that makes the demons tremble amen praise the name of the lord you feel that way today 
Amen, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We need a life. Amen. The life of Christ in you. Amen, amen. Glory to God. Oh, it's the life behind the name. Oh, that makes the demons tremble. Oh, and it's the life behind the name. Oh, that makes the proud heart humble. Oh, and it was God who devised the plan. And in all things as a man. So he can give, give us the life behind the name. Oh, it was a life behind the name. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen, amen. It was the life behind the name. Oh, hallelujah. Well, it was God who defies the plan. Oh, and in all things as a man, he could live. So he could give. the light behind. Oh, give him praise. Hallelujah. That makes the demon. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He promised that life in you. Glory. He was God. Oh, well, and in all things as a man. Oh, he can live so he can give us. Well, the life behind the name. Oh, give him a shout of praise. shout of praise hallelujah oh you feel that way today oh that life is coming into you praise god amen by a manifestation amen of the spirit and the people bringing the word to life glory to god hallelujah is that the way you believe amen wonderful praise god you may have your seats one more time amen as we like to invite one of our ministering brethren to greet the convention amen and to greet us this day so may the Lord bless you as he comes. Amen. And we pray Richard's blessing upon you. Amen. As you share for a few moments. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So um, I want to use this opportunity to thank God for bringing us alive today. And I want to thank our precious brother, Paul Onajaka for this great opportunity again to speak just in a little way of testimony to the bride of Jesus Christ around the world. I want to thank all the believers around the world, uh, fellow ministers, those that are going to minister in this convention and those that will testify as well. I want to say God richly bless you. I trust the grace of God is sufficient for us. And I pray he will continue to keep us until the day of his return. In a moment, I just would like us to uh, read through the scriptures I have here in the, uh, the Bible. Turn with me to the book of Isaiah. And uh, it reads this wise. I'm taking this from Isaiah chapter 61 from verse 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God 
to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Amen. Let us have a word of prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you at this time. And Lord, your word we just read. And we want to bless you, Lord, that you will help us in this hour to be a manifestation of your own person in the reflection by the characters of your word. Father, I pray that you will bless our brother Paul Anajaka and his entire team and church. I pray that you will also bless uh, our precious brother Tio Ovid and his entire church for all the great efforts they have been doing in getting us to have these meetings come around about us around the world and at the same time blessing everyone all the efforts they put together their time and everything we pray that you bless them O oh father lord to them that are going to listen to this short testimony and many more uh, things that will be spoken out in this convention. We pray may your Holy Spirit visit every heart, convict every heart of every sin, and purify the people and prepare them, O oh God, for the coming of the Lord. This is the only thing that remains in this hour as we see the scriptures totally fulfilled. Our prayer, O oh Father, whatever you are doing in this season, please don't do it without us. We pray a Holy Spirit to be our guide. We pray a Holy Spirit to be our teacher. We pray a Holy Spirit to remind us. We thank you in everything that at the end of it all, Lord, only you will take all the honor and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, I want to thank again uh, Brother Paul Anajika for this great opportunity for this Easter meeting convention, the theme of which is the manifestation of Christ in you will be the vindication of the rapture. What a wonderful uh, team that has just been selected matching the hour we are living in. And uh, I believe that through the scriptures that we have read, we have journeyed all the way from Genesis down to Revelation in the sequence of the timing of the church ages. And uh, it has come to the point that we are all, everything we hear, everything we see is pointing to us about the coming of the Lord. And if the Lord is coming, there have to be a people he is coming for. And if there have to be people they are coming for, it has to be that the Bible had made us to understand that everyone has to prepare. I could just imagine sometimes when we want to make a trip, we will always get ourselves a prepare, prepare, prepare. And everybody is preparing for a time because you know you are going to move at this particular time. But we are in a strange world today that the same voice is calling from heaven and speaking all around and getting the people to get ready, get ready, get ready. And it seems by the way things are going that some people are not understanding the readiness and how serious it is, the voice that is still speaking to us that we should be ready. And the only identity, the only guarantee that we have is that even if everybody begins to get ready in whatever he thinks he wants to be ready about, there is only one assurance, one, one, one thing that's, that would assure you, assure us, that we be a manifestation of the readiness, that we are the ones 
to be in the rapture? What makes you to be? What gets you to be? Now that brings about what we call the common statement people always said. They say satisfaction is guaranteed. Now brings me back again to a little explanation and understanding of what is guarantee, what is warranty. Amen. So we find that warranty and guarantee, they speak too close about the same thing. And I would like to say, what is a warranty? A warranty is a, a guarantee from a seller that a defective product will be repaired or replaced within a specific time. That is your warranty. Now we are talking about products. And we are human beings. We cannot see ourselves as products, but like as a type. And then what is a guarantee? According to the Oxford Dictionary, we find that A guarantee is a more general term and a warranty is a more specific, it's more specific, that is written and it's legal. So the warranty is like a guarantee, like I said before, of the integrity of a product and of the maker's responsibility for it. Now, in the theme of this meeting, he said that the life of Christ in you is the total assurance. What guarantees the rapture is a manifestation, is what proves the manifestation that you are in the rapture. Many believers today believe that they are believers because they go to church, they do all kinds of things, they can act anyhow, so long as they flow along with the religion of what flows within the church, that is the assurance they are going to make a rapture. Everybody keeps saying, oh, I am in the bride, I am in the bride, I am in the bride. Or it's going to be not that way. There is an assurance. There is a specificity of so, a specific thing that we really have to confirm you. A true believer that is prepared to be raptured. The Bible said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And we are waiting for this glory manifested. To be manifested in us. The glory plan. God sent forth Elijah the prophet in this end time, William Marion Abraham, according to Malachi chapter 4, from verse 5 to 6, of a total restoration, the hearts of the children, to, of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to the fathers. He said, least I come and smit the whole earth with a curse. What is this restoration? A full restoration of God's word, because... We knew in Joel, we realized that there had been the eating down of the bride's tree. This bride's tree had always been the same tree that made manifested in the Garden of Eden. And we saw how the locusts, the palmer worm, the, the canker worm, the caterpillar, they all came to really wash it down. But thank God, there was still life in the roots. And at a point in time, God promised that he's going to restore again. And the restoration that he's bringing back again to his church is the restoration of his word by the Holy Spirit. The reason why we must do all we can to get the Holy Ghost. According to 2 Peter chapter 1, from verse 2, and we have to look at what the scripture said there. And he said to your faith, add virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, temperance, temperance, patience, patience, to godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness. 
And then the Holy Spirit comes in to inspect all these virtues, which is the true stature of a perfect man, which the prophet made us to understand. Whether I'm able to feed my family or not, let these virtues live in me. And at the selling of this by the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit still leads the way from the beginning, from the time of being converted. And the Holy Spirit leads the way to begin to bring, bring these additions, adding of these virtues right into our lives. So the quality of a believer that will really make the rapture, that will bring the manifestation of the rapture, is the one that has this life of Christ in him, these virtues of Christ in his life. And that is the one the Holy Spirit is going to seal. You become a finished work. That will be the manifestation. Not one that we go. We are in church. You are in the borderline. We don't know where you are going to. You know where you are going to. We must be very specific in this hour. To know that there is only one satisfaction that has been guaranteed for us. Christ. That life of Christ. Is the satisfaction guaranteed. And that is the specific thing we need. The entire world has been restored in this hour. God sent forth his prophet. And let it be your tie post today. Many people are in church and not living the life. Many people are in church and they don't want to do what the word says do. Many people are in church and they are worshipping other gods. Some are worshipping money. Some are worshipping all kinds of things. Some are doing anything, and whenever you bring up any issue, they will have to question it. It's not the time to make any questioning. But it's the time that the manifestation of these virtues, because you are not going to force it into your life, it will be a thing that will operate in a very simple way, because it has to be God in simplicity again. So my brothers, my sisters, before I round up, and as I will wish as the ministers will be coming to minister the word of God. I want to really address your mind back again to understand that there is only one thing that is guaranteed in your life. And that is the life of Jesus Christ, the statue of a perfect man. And so long as that has to be in you, everything will be all right. But if you do not have this. You are not going to get it from your backyard or from the market or from the supermarket or buy with your money. You only need to surrender your life to Christ. You need to repent. Repent of your sins. Call him into your life. Tell him to change your life. Let him change your life to what he wants to be done. Total surrendered life to him. And let him fill you all completely. And by so doing, his life will completely enrich your life. And when that is done, the Holy Spirit, God himself, will be satisfied. That when he come, as the trumpet sounds, that same voice, the Holy Spirit will identify that same word he had put in your life. And from there, up into the rapture. May God richly bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You appreciate those greetings today. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. And we appreciate that. Hallelujah to his name. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We feel his presence. He's all around us, friends. No matter where we are, no matter how we feel. Amen. The presence of God is always there. We just have to reach out and grab him. Praise God. Let's sing that song, Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior. Amen. Hallelujah. Great in battle. Oh, hallelujah. Jehovah is his name. Amen. So get ready now to change the order of service. Amen. Let's lift our hands to invite the presence of the Lord among us. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Oh, he's a mighty warrior, oh, great in battle, Jehovah is your name, oh, Jehovah is, Jehovah is, hallelujah, he's 
praise your name. Oh, now lift your hands and just close your eyes and sing it. Jehovah is your name. Oh, he's a mighty warrior, great in battle. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is, oh Jehovah is your name, oh Jehovah is your name, Jehovah is, oh is your name. of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Glory to God. We thank you. We praise you. We glorify you with all our hearts. Amen and amen. Well, it is our pleasure, pray God today, to invite to the platform to speak to us and to the bride around the world. Amen. None other than Reverend Dele Adelodun. Amen. All the way from Nigeria. Amen. Glory to God. So give a hand clap for him as he gets ready to come. Amen. And bless us with the word of the living God. Amen. Amen. Just open your hearts to receive what God has in store for you today. Amen. He's got a blessing for you there. Amen. So God bless him as he comes. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask it. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you, saints, from all the parts of the world that you might be listening in today uh, for this Easter program. So it might be safe for me to say good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what part of the world you are. And uh, we thank the Lord for giving us another privilege uh, to have a time of Easter, which has assumed a better meaning and different dimension to the bride of Jesus Christ. And uh, we want to thank Pastor Paul for giving the privilege and the platform uh, to be of service to the people of God, believing God that somewhere along the line we can be of a blessing. I appreciate the saints in Ivory Coast and in many parts of the world where they will be listening in. May the Lord bless you all very much. Also, I appreciate the technical team in the uh, in Trinidad for the good work they are doing and the, for the blessings they have been to the body of Christ by availing the saints, their platform and technology to reach out to the believers in all parts of the world. May the Lord bless everyone and give you a very wonderful Easter. I bring greetings from the saints in Nigeria too. The saints are doing very fine and I'm sure they will be happy to know that the believers are well in all the parts of the world. God bless you. You are welcome to his presence. Amen. Um, I will humbly request that we rise up for the reading of the scriptures this morning. <clears throat> if you have your Bibles with you, I want us to turn to the book of Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19. 
I was wondering now if I should read the whole chapter, but if I didn't do, I urge everyone to read the whole chapter, but I will get my thoughts very clear from the scriptures. Exodus 19, <clears throat> I'll read from verse 1. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai, or Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. I think this has a New Testament also similarity. When Apostle Peter said that we're a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, separated unto God. Amen. So we now know the secret of how to meet these qualifications. The secret is very simple. He said, if ye will obey my voice indeed. Amen. Let's not pay lip service to the word. Let's obey indeed. Then we shall be a peculiar treasure. A treasure with distinction. Amen. A unique treasure unto the Lord. Oh, wonderful. Verse 7, And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord had spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, watch this verse. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. God said he will come down in a cloud, thick one, for the purpose of doing one thing. For the purpose of... Uh, vindicating his servants for the purpose of establishing the words of his servants. He said, let me read that again. He said, and the Lord said unto Moses, lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. We must finish this passage. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take it to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. There shall not an ant touch it, but it shall surely be stoned or shot through, whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet sounded long, they shall come up to the mount." And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes 
And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud, amen, upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with uh, God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of the furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by his voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount. And the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze. And many of them that and many of them perish. And let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou charge us, saying, Set bounds about the mount, and sanctify it. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest it break forth upon them. Amen. Verse 21, verse 20, chapter 20, verse 1 says, And, the, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And on and on, he gave all the entire commandments. Amen? And uh, when he has uh, fully given the entire commandments, he went into the ordinances and statutes and all the instructions and principles and everything right when he came down in the cloud and still on the mount. So the fellowship stretched up to chapter 22, chapter 23, somewhere there before it was over. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his holy word. God bless you. You may be seated. <clears throat> this moment, if the Lord will be our help, which I trust he always has and he always will, I want to speak on the subject that I called the Easter cloud of our redemption. The Easter cloud of our redemption. Amen. From the chapter where we read, we saw Israel being brought out and they have actually come out and in their coming out, God took them through the wilderness. But the wilderness was not meant to be the end of their journey. The wilderness is a place of sanctification, a place of purging, in order to really sift out the people for whom the exodus was actually meant. Because the Bible told us that when the journey began, because many people saw it as a great new revival, just as the song that we do sing says, I'm going through, I'm going through. Lord, I have started to walk in the light, shining upon me from heaven so bright. I bet the world and it follows adieu. I've started with Jesus and I'm going through. 
In another verse, it said, so many started to run in the race. Many believed it because it is new. But not very many expect to go through. And the only reason for this is because every revival always attracts all kinds of seeds. Every revival attracts all kinds of people. It will attract the genuine ones who will be able to go through completely. It will attract those number who will only stay within the range of the message. They can't go past the range of the message of the hour. It will also attract those people who will come in just to take offense at the message. All these things I'm saying, the message had already forewarned us about it. And that is why in the message unveiling of God, the prophet said, sometimes we need to speak or do things in a certain way. And the prophet said, it is done intentionally. It is done deliberately in order to do what? Thin down the crowd. But you see, everybody will hear the same thing. Just like Abel and Cain heard the same thing but came with different response uh, to the same gospel that they had. Because one will be hearing by revelation, the other will be hearing carnally. Everybody will hear the same thing, but the prophet said there is going to be different type of reactions to the same thing that will be heard. God is not going to... Uh, call some people somewhere else or put some people another place to talk to them, it will talk to them the same thing, the same way, the same time. But each will pick their understanding of the same thing by the type of seed that they have. This is why the prophet said, this one thing they will hear will make some people to ponder will make some people to get annoyed and walk out. When they walk out, they stay in the compound, whether uh, wondering whether to live permanently or to come back inside. But the same thing. And it will make some people to just walk out the gate and go forever, never to come again. And it will make some people never to leave their seat, but to sit there and to ponder and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. And the prophet said, that thing is said intentionally in order to achieve that. Why? Because every revival is also attractive, not only to the genuine ones, but to the mixed multitude. And this exodus here and its revival was no different. In the scripture, the Bible told us that when Moses came with many mighty signs and wonders, which they were signs, miracles, and wonders to the real Exodus people, but a judgment to the Egyptians. The plagues were signs and wonders. Amen. It punished the Egyptians, but it was a blessing to the true Israelites. Now, all those great things attracted sympathies from even people who are non-Israelites. For people who do not even know what the content, the context, and the, and, the, and the fact of that revival is. It attracted them because as in every situation, many will be attracted to a revival for different reasons. When Martin Luther had a mighty revival, a lot of people were attracted to it not because they understood the message of justification. Not because what Martin Luther was saying was anything to them. But because they saw it as an avenue to be free from the yoke of the Roman system. Whether spiritually or physically. And they are seeing a man who was championing a cause of coming out of that system. And is not getting hurt. is not getting killed. Nobody is disturbing him. They said this is an opportunity for us to also do what? For, to also come out of it. Some wanted to be free from the burden of penitence. Some wanted to be free from the burden of offerings and the levies that they have been put on them. Amen. And that was the reason they left Luther. 
And that was why it was said the greatest victory Luther had was not to protest the Catholic Church and get by with it, but to be able to rise above the fanatism that greeted his revival. Because in that revival, mixed multitude also went with him. Mixed multitude are people who do not understand why we are doing what we are doing. They just wanted to be free. So they consider that revival a means to their own end. So in this revival also, the scripture made it clear to us that a lot of mixed multitude went with them. We don't know their number, but they were in that number. They sang with them. They enjoyed the water from the rock. They were eating manna with them. Every blessing that God sent upon the people, it was sent unto them. Even when God was given instruction, he said, this instruction, these ordinances are not only meant for you Israelites, even for the strangers who are in your midst. These folks also, a lot of them, perhaps they were firstborn and so forth, they, you know, they saw the revival started with the blood of the Passover lamb. Do you know what they did? They also put themselves under it. And because the deal is when I see the blood, I will pass over you. They also escaped the death of the Passover night. So every blessing that an, a true Israelite is enjoying was also enjoyed by the mixed multitude. But then, the seed cannot be air with the shock. Mixed multitude could go very far, but it can never go to the end. Judas Iscariot went very far, but he never went to the end. And as such, these guys are going so far. This is the reason God did not just take its people out of Egypt and just put them straight into the land of Canaan. What did he do? He allowed a gap period of a wilderness journey. The wilderness journey is like a sanctifying time. Wherein we test virtue and we test rebellion. Your own individual sanctification is also a testing time to test whether you will be a rebellious child or a genuine child of God that we go through. That is the message of the prophet and the message of a present water from the living rock. So it's a period to test the genuity of the people. Because redemption itself has two harms. As most of us know, it involves coming out of a place and going into another place. Are you here, church? So you must come out of somewhere and you must be taken to somewhere. If you are brought out and you are left hanging, your redemption is not complete. So God has brought Israel out of Egypt. Their journey cannot end in the wilderness. But the wilderness experience is essential because it will prove, it will save. Amen. It will separate, it will cut, it will slice. So that only those who are genuine enter into God's inheritance. There is nothing wrong with the message of the hour. This is the third exodus. If the first exodus went through that, the last must go through it. Exodus is actually a redemption because it involves a calling out and a bringing into somewhere. The prophet said if God brought you out of a place and he didn't take you to where he should, he would have done a poor job. He brought Israel, hallelujah, out of Egypt. He's taking them into the land of promise. Amen. When he came in flesh in the second exodus, he brought the church out of religion. Amen. He brought them out of religion and he brought them to the church. Amen. He called them out of the religion and he made a church out of them. Hallelujah. In this last one, he is calling the bride out of the church. And if he calls us out of the church, there must also be a homeland. Amen. There must be a fresh Canaan, a spiritual land of the baptism of the Holy Ghost that he must bring you and I into. Uh, so the journey is just the same. But you see, I want us to watch something here very important. When he brought them out, 
They have crossed the Red Sea. They have sung the song of victory. Amen. They have enjoyed all the goodness of the Lord. God knew that for these people to be sustained, he must give them something for that journey. The signs and wonders up to the crossing of the Red Sea, up to the water from the rock, up to the manna from heaven, up to the flesh and the meat that they ate. When they cried for a variety of meals, they were all signs, miracles, and wonders. I want you to follow me. Because if you understand the first exodus, you will understand your own exodus. As I've always said, the first exodus was the planting exodus. The last one here is the harvest of all the planting. And if you planted one seed in the planting season, you are not going to reap just one seed. You are going to reap plenty seeds out of that one seed. If it is a maize or a corn, from your one seed, you have the potential to reap 612 seeds. If you plant two, that is 1,224 seeds and many more like that. So there is always more of whatever goes down in the planting coming up in the harvest. So like I said before, where you see one Kora, expect several Koras today. Where you see one Datan, expect several Datans today. Where you see one Abiram, expect many Abirams today. And where you see one Joshua, expect many Joshuas. Expect many Caleb's. Those who will never come up with an evil report. Those whose report will not only bless them, it will preserve them. And the prophet said, the Bible said, they were able to give a better report because they have another spirit. So we can begin to see the working of the Holy Spirit even from the Old Testament. It might come upon them as an anointing or as an inspiration and in these last days is coming upon us as a baptism. It's coming inside of us. So it should show forth a greater life, a more glorious life than it was under shadow. After all, if you see the shadow of something, Amen. It is still not very clear until the substance declares it. You are the substance of all the shadow that was in the first exodus. So this age presents a more glorious age. You love him? Alright, this is where I'm coming. In that wilderness, there were many outstanding things that took place. And all these things were done to prove the people in order to separate between the genuine seed and the false seed. Between the people for whom the revival is meant and the mixed multitude. So whatever happened then, expect a repeat of it now. If that is God's pattern and program, it is going to be exactly the same thing now. In the first exodus, the ministry that brought the exodus suffered both from within and without. Balaam attacked from outside, but Datan, Korad, and Abiram attacked from within. Amen. If those are the characters, and if that is the shadow, you would be expecting to see the same thing in this substance. Now, here we come to one of the most crucial aspect of that exodus. You will appreciate it as we go on. In fact, the redemption of the exodus was sealed by this aspect. You heard God. He said, if you will indeed hearken unto me and obey my word, do you know that up till that moment, he has not given the word for that hour? Go search the Bible. They have only been living by the first two blessings of every ministry. 
they were living by the signs that we can say the sign in the end, the messianic discernment, which the prophet called the healing service. That was why the face of Moses' ministry up to that point revolved around signs and wonders. I want you to follow this very closely. It will help you in your journey. They saw the plagues. They saw the Passover. Amen. They saw the manna. They received water from the rock. Hallelujah. They saw all those external blessings. Now, when God was giving all these things, is to be able to gather faith in the bracket for the main thing. I want to tell the church this morning that as powerful as those things were, that even elicited so much revival until sisters and brothers were singing the song of victory and it looks like every supernatural God had, he was pouring upon the church. By which he put the fear of that church upon all the people around. Yet, that was not the main blessing. That didn't make them a peculiar treasure to God. Oh, listen to me for your good church. It didn't make them what? A peculiar treasure to God. As God was settling down with those things. God raised the stakes and he came with an higher, with a higher standard. Then he began to tell the church, if indeed, not by mouth, because there's a generation that will pay lip service to the message. There's a generation that will not go far. You will see big banners and mighty signboards. In the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when it shall begin to sound, and yet in the midst of that congregation, the voice of the seventh angel will be so despised and hated. Who will deceive who here? Church, you have been armed with the word of the Lord. If you fall for deception, it is your fault. <coughs> you see mighty banners. You see great imprint on bosses in the voice of the sad days of the seventh angel when it shall begin to sound. And it is an aberration to even read one quotation of the prophet in the midst of such a congregation. What is the voice of the seventh angel? Who is that voice? Friends, don't pay lip service to the message of the hour. Whatever the word says, amen, amen, must be an absolute, con must take your absolute consideration. Amen. Whatever the word says, amen. must be swallowed and accepted, line, hook, and sinker. Amen. We have no better formula for redemption than that which the Lord has given unto us. You could enjoy your signs. You could enjoy your wonders. And yet your heart is far from the Lord. Those are simple patterns even from the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. People followed him for signs and wonders. For mighty miracles. The Bible declared. At a point they even wanted to make him king. But you know what the Bible said? He said all this great emotional outpouring is not because of his word, but it's because of the miracles of bread and so on and so forth. But there's a generation that is designed to move beyond these levels. Many will hence their journey in the wilderness. We cannot help it. But by the grace of God, there's a generation that we go through. I'm going through, friends. By his strength, I will go through. No matter what comes, no matter what go, I will go through. Because if we cannot go through, we have failed. If we cannot go through, we have not made it. There will never be a second chance for a man who has had the truth, who has acknowledged it is the truth, 
and refuse to walk in the light of the truth. It is an unpardonable sin. That's what the word says. So make up your mind to serve the Lord. Prepare to meet your Lord. So these people have enjoyed all those blessings till that very moment. I want to deal this so hard so that you can see what is happening in your own day. Now, but all the things they have enjoyed has not made them a peculiar treasure to God. What will make them a peculiar treasure that God will do many mighty things for? As he said in the book of Exodus 19, is if indeed they will obey and follow his word. We will obey and follow his conduct. We will obey and follow his order. We will obey and follow his doctrine. If there is nothing in us to do that, oh, you have fears for handing it in the wilderness. Exodus 19. So it follows that the signs and wonders and all the mighty things attracted all kind of congregations. It was the same thing in the second Exodus. And it is the same thing in the third Exodus. Are you following me? When the prophet was going around the world, healing the sick, doing mighty things, outstanding great miracles, such as have never been heard before, except in the Bible days. Amen. They still urge the prophet today as the person that started the post-World War healing and revival by which the nations of the earth were healed both in mind, in body, and in their spirit. Because the messenger by the ministry represented the new hope for a world that has been bedeviled by the effects of war. Thank God for the message of the hour. Thank God for sending a messenger. Thank God for Brother Abraham. I am not ashamed to mention his name. I mention Apostle Paul freely. I mention Prophet Moses freely. And I must mention Brother Brown freely. If that is offensive, oh my, it shows you are prone to offense. Amen? Amen. But you see, all those things that he did, they were just to attract. A lot of people who were attracted, we get stuck there. They will never be able to move beyond that. All some people had today was God sent us, Brother Abraham. All some people have today is a water baptism in Jesus' name. Beyond that, they can't go any further. And it is in that further that there is actually redemption. Because the redemption of the last days will take you beyond the healing service ministry. It will bring you to the abundant revelation of the word. It is that revelation that can change you. It is that revelation that can give you a true healing. That can give you true conversion. That can give you genuine salvation. And that can plant your feet into the land of promise. Outside of that you cannot make it. It is that revelation that will make you a peculiar treasure. In other words, it is that revelation that vindicates you as the healer of the hour. You will appreciate why I'm drawing this background shortly. You love him. Now, when they got to that place, God told Moses, I called your attention to it in the scripture. He said, I'm going to come down in the thick cloud. Amen? Amen? Yes. If you can put it on the, on the uh, screen for me. I'm going to come down in the what? Thick cloud. So, cloud will be associated with this journey. Are you with me? 
cloud will be associated with this journey. Fire will be associated with this journey. And by the grace of God, in these last days, we have the witness of a cloud. And we have the witness of the pillar of fire. The pillar of fire brought them out. The cloud will take them in. <laughs> the generations of the earth must understand this. The pillar of fire will bring them out. Amen. Amen. Because in Exodus chapter 3, he said, I am come down. Amen. Amen. And whom did I see? Whom did Moses see? He saw a bush that was burning and the leaves were not consumed. Amen. Amen. That was the pillar of fire in the midst of the bush. Come down to do what? He said, I have heard the cry of my people. And now I am come down for the purpose of what? Delivering them. I am going to take them out. Amen. At Ohio River in 1933, the pillar of fire came down. And it gave a commission. Amen. Of what? Of forerunning of Christ. Amen. That which is aimed at bringing people out. People cannot be brought out without some sort of signs and attraction. And that was why Moses asked the Lord, if I get to that place, what do I say? Say, I am the I am sent you. What will be the vindication that you sent me if they want to see something? Because Moses knew people will want to see some vindication. They will want to see some things. And God began his vindication with his rod. Amen. They saw signs of supernatural by the rod. Because the rod was given over to God. He then God gave him two signs. One by the rod, one by his arm. And he said, if they do not believe the voice of the first, they will accept that of the second. And from that rod came many other mighty miracles and signs of wonder which really attracted the people that God must have been with this man. Because even though God came down, it was not God himself that went to confront Pharaoh. It was Moses Pharaoh saw. Hallelujah. And the vessel of Moses became a confusion to Pharaoh. He took the words of Moses as the words of a man instead of taking it as the words of God. He didn't realize that Moses veiled the pillar of fire. In these last days, the messenger veiled the pillar of fire to interpret the word to you. It is the interpreted word that will make you a peculiar treasure, a holy priesthood, a royal nation that will vindicate you as the seed of God. When you have problem with that interpretation, you are, oh, you are a wilderness man. And many are wandering in the wilderness today. That is why they were devising all kinds of programs in order to keep hope alive. But there is nothing that will sustain the believer than the revealed word. It is the revival of the blind. So Moses had all his first second pulls. But it is the third, which is the opening of the word, that will actually produce the treasure. The first and the second pools, the mixed multitude and the real seed enjoyed it alike. Is it getting clear to you? They all enjoyed the blessings. But you see, the blessings of the third pool is eventually to sieve out all mixed multitude so that only the peculiar treasure makes it inside and that is the real redemption this is the reason the prophet said i want this easter to mean more to you than any other easter how many ever read that in the quotations it is the in the message it is the rising of the sun if you look at the topic of that message alone and you are spiritual you will realize that god was announcing the beginning of a new day because the rising of the sun announces the beginning of a new day. 
begins the beginning of a new dispensation or the beginning of a new economy. Are you following me? So both the topic and the content for the spiritual mind means a great deal. Sometimes in order to enjoy the content, you must have the revelation of the topic. A new day was declared. Hallelujah. Just as it was for Israel also. A new day, a new month, a new season was declared. And this declaration, inside this declaration, the prophet used in the horizon of the sun to explain what Easter is to the believer. The Easter we celebrate is not what the world does. Amen. In fact, the Easter of the world has become polluted and it has become commercial. They don't even remember Christ as such in the entire thing. If they are fasting, there's a commercial license. They will advertise things that will help you retain your body nutrients. So to the people of the world, it's for them to make money at such times. Amen. And also to the church. But to the believer, Easter means much more than that. The prophet said for many years, what we have been celebrating is the resurrection of the groom of the Lord Jesus Christ. But in the Easter of 1965, he said, I want to call your attention to another Easter. Amen. Then he began to say, the same word that applies to the groom applies to the bride. Amen. He said, because the bride will be word of his word, life of his life, power of his power. In fact, she will be him. So where the Bible said he is risen, he is not here, I can safely say she is risen. She is not here because the bride is part of the groom. And if that took place for the groom, the bride must also manifest it. Where was the bride dead in? The bride was dead in denominations. Hallelujah. There are so many brides in the denomination that will have their Easter. We all were once in that. But because we carried the seed of election, the signs and wonders were not enough to bring us out. But this bride will hear the voice of the mama eagle. And deep we call to the deep. At the noise of the water spout. And the real bride will not be comfortable again. Because when that deep cause makes the call, he's going to ignite something in you. Was it it igniting the seed of God? Once that seed is shaken and come alive, amen, it's like the dry bones of Ezekiel. The Bible said the moment it caught life, it never remained dry. There was motion in progress. There, was thing, there were things taking place. It was progressing and progressing until it progressed to a stature, to a point of a full-blown man, ready as an army. I don't know what this does to you believers. But once that seed is struck, life had begun. You cannot stop life. You cannot end the life. Let life be on the rock, it will come out. I've seen plantations come up on the rock. How it happened, I do not know. But these are God's supernatural signs and evidences to show that life is unstoppable. This life of God in us once ignited by the word of God. My goodness. You love him this morning. So this church that has received so many abundant powers, signs and wonders, having been brought up by the pillar of fire, needs something to take care of them in the wilderness and beyond the wilderness. It will be a permanent blessing to establish them and show them forth as a different people. A royal priest with a peculiar treasure among all the people of the earth. These blessings came out of the cloud.
God said, I will come down in a thick cloud. Amen? Amen. Lord, I come unto thee the thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee. And do what? And believe thee forever. We must believe this message for whatever. Because by the opening of the word, it has the content to take care of us throughout time and throw us into eternity. This is why the prophet said that seven seal is like a rocket that drops here, that drops there, that drops there and drops there. And what does it do again? He said the seventh seal is the end of time. Is the end of a struggling world. Is the end of everything. So as long as we are here waiting for eternity, we shall be in the seventh seal. Amen. Amen. And the seventh seal is a revelation designed to take care of you forever. So we will, that Exodus church will have no alternative than the message of the hour. Oh, they are not getting this? You will have no alternative to the teaching of Moses. Because God wanted to come down in a cloud to vindicate his servant and put him in a position that the church before him must believe him forever. Whether he is there or not. Moses didn't even live to enter into Canaan physically. He saw it, but his feet never got in there. Are you catching it? But something will survive Moses. Amen. It is not the presence of Moses that will be, that will be important than the teaching the word Moses brought. Amen. So in the absence of Moses, the word must remain believed forever. Because it's got the content to take care of them all the way through the wilderness into their inheritance and establish them in their inheritance. This was why when Joshua came, listen to me, God won Joshua he said, this book of law, I will tell you what came out of the cloud, so you will appreciate it. He said, this book of law, hallelujah, must not depart from your mouth, day and night, you must meditate therein. Church of the living God, this message of the hour must not depart from your mouth, must not depart from your family, must not depart from your church. You must meditate therein day and night till when? Till Jesus comes. There must not be an alternative to the message of the hour. It follows the pattern of the biblical exodus. That was the shadow. This is the substance. Do you see why it is difficult for us to live off the message? Do you see why we must do everything by the message? Do you know why we must loyal to the message? Because it is the same commandment. If cloud vindicated Moses to be believed forever, I want to tell you cloud has come again. This cloud was not signs and wonders. It wasn't the first pull. It wasn't the second pool. It wasn't an healing service. It was the revealed world. That was why before the cloud took place, God won the church. Amen. If you will indeed Do you know, friends, when the prophet or our Lord Jesus Christ was having the ministry of healing service, the signs and wonders. Do you know it gathered all kind of congregations? Do you know everybody was attracted to it? I've shown you that of Jesus, our Lord in the Bible. 
How about that of the prophet? A lot of people were attracted to him. The full gospel, the united Pentecostal, the oneness, the assemblies, the four square, and many other mighty assemblies of God, mighty denominations. They were the ones who sponsored him around the world seven times. You know why? Because the message then, they can manage it. Because then, it wasn't much of the message that was the major. It was the attraction of the signs and wonders. Are you catching it? But that could take care of denominations. That cannot take care of the seed. It could attract the seed to come close. But the seed needs something more. For his own redemption. For his own body change. For his own conversion. For his own deliverance. This is why the prophet said the evidence that you have the Holy Ghost is that you have the ability to follow the word to the storehouse all the way through. Amen. Many had had a claim that they have the Holy Spirit before the opening of the word. The evidence that they truly have the Spirit is their ability to follow the word completely in conduct, in order, in doctrine. If they cannot do it, he put a question mark on their conversion. This must not be the opinion of man. This was why the prophet said at the opening of the word, you got no thought coming. It is no longer your faith in the son of God, but you will live by the faith of the son of God. The conviction of the son of God, the belief of the son of God, the revelation of the son of God, because you've denied your own thinking. You have no more opinion in this matter. You only want to think what God says and nothing more. This is how we are delivered, church. We were attracted like the others. Amen. It's like a fisherman's bait. You get that? The fisherman threw the net in the water. Amen. What attracted the fishes and all kinds of water things? Crabs and all kinds of things. It's not the net. It's the bait in the net. Are you catching it? The bait is always nice and attractive. Sweet smelling. Hallelujah. But you see, when they are attracted, they all come into the net. But is the fisherman interested in all sea creatures? No, sir. The people he really wanted is fish. He is not a crab man. He is a fisherman. So when he pull out his net, what does he do? He separates. Hallelujah. So the message of separation is what came in Exodus 19. The message of separation today is the third pull. Is the opening of the word. And it came from the cloud. Up till that moment, the real bride is not identified. Do you know up till this moment, you don't know who is who? It was after the giving of the message that some people began to become obvious. Dathan, Korah, and Habiram became obvious. It was at the giving of the message that you realize that some people can still come up with golden calves. Are you here? It's after that you realize that after two years of journey, some people are still ready to go back two years backward instead of two weeks forward into the inheritance. As a matter of fact, they began to look for a captain to take them back to Egypt. It was after this Exodus 19 that you saw some elders who brought evil reports. You will never know there's a congregation like that. You will never know that there are renowned men like that great preachers like that who could preach just one service in few hours and convert the entire church into worldliness and convert the entire church into Egypt. So much inspiration until people were ready to look for a captain to take them back to Egypt after two years journey to Kadesh Barnea. Exodus 19 is very important. Do not play with the message of the hour. If you don't have a conviction of it, you better go on your knees. Pray for revelation. If you take everything and you become a cesspool, something is wrong. 
Watch this church. I will come unto thee in a thick cloud. And what did he do? He told the folks. He said, Moses, tell the people, this is my plan. So God gave it in advance. So it looks like a what? A prophecy. There's going to be a mighty visitation. A mighty blasting. So rocky, so tremendous. It will shake everywhere. Prepare the mind of the people. Didn't God told William Bram to prepare our mind? Are you spiritual? He told him to bring a message says, is this the time? It was a message to prepare our mind for the visitation of the cloud. In the message says, is this the time? The prophet said, I saw a terrible blast. Are we together? He said, this blast was so rocky until the prophet thought it was the end of his life. And Brother Bram began to guess many things that blast could be. Could it mean this? Could it mean that? Could it mean the other? Why would, why would there be such a concern? Because it is coming to a needle edge point for the church at that hour. It is coming to such a point, a pointed edge, a thin razor edge, that is difficult to stand and maintain your balance without a supernatural hand holding you forth. It is coming to the edge of the cliff. But most of what the prophet thought it could mean, it never meant. Because God held it in his chest. Hallelujah. But as he told Moses in Exodus 19 to prepare the heart of the people, he also told William Abraham to prepare the heart of his people. Even William Abraham prepared his house. He told his wife that if he leaves, this, he gave her a valedictory message. And how she should live her life and cope with the children after he is gone. I think Sister Meda saw a lot in life. No wonder she grew gray earlier than her time. Oh my God. So much pressure from the ministry. But you see, what the prophet never realized was that it was meant to be a change of the ministry. It was meant to be a time to be given commission and a vindication that the people might believe him forever. Up to that time, the message of the hour wasn't perfected. Listen to me, church. Up to that moment that the prophet was preaching the says, is this the time? The message of the hour wasn't perfected. I am not one of those who will tell you to throw away the messages before 1963. Are you listening to me? God uses prophets all the time. But India before 1963, the prophet said still there were things that we guessed at. Amen. In other words, there were things we guessed at. We've not had the absolute truth of it. It's not because the ministry has problem. It's because the program of God must run like that to bring it to perfection. And those were the seasons we even called the White House Rider the Lord Jesus Christ. Because in those times, we were also appealing to the great teachings of theologians like Uriah Smith to understand some facts of the Bible. Are you catching it? Amen. But it doesn't mean there were not many blessings that came by inspiration at that time but the prophet was an honest messenger while he was waiting for the truth of many things he said we guessed at some things which we believe we are so right and that was why he said when those angels came down the things they gave me came better than my personal understanding and judgment and he said, that makes my Bible a new book in my hand. We must appreciate that. We must realize that. 
that the cloud experience is important to our redemption. It's important to our perfection. It's important to bringing us to full stature. Because it was by the cloud that we received our full resurrection. What is Easter? Easter is a resurrection. And the prophet said, this Easter, what it means to us is that it is not the Easter of the groom again. It is the Easter of the bride that has been resurrected out of what? Dark, dead denominationalism into the glorious age. We have been taken out of the wilderness into our inheritance, into our land of promise, into our homeland, into our spiritual Canaan, which is not heaven but the earth. Into the dispensation of the open, open word. Into the age of the bride. Where we could feed on things that we have been given by the cloud. So don't get stuck, church of the living God. Don't stop there because the prophet never stopped there. When you say things like this, it annoys the people. And you get annoyed maybe because you are a generation that must get stuck. Am I not quoting the prophet? It is the prophet I'm quoting. The prophet came to a junction in as I was with Moses. Is he said either to where we have gotten, we've gotten to Jordan. Amen. How many ever read that? He said, but you see, the inheritance of some people were given before Jordan. Amen. Two and a half tribes got their inheritance before Jordan. Do you realize that? But there's a generation that their inheritance is across Jordan. Amen. I am part of that generation. Pentecostal got their blessings before Jordan. Because Laodicean age is in twofold. The Pentecostal age of Laodicea. And for the believer, the bride age of Laodicea. My inheritance is not in that period. It's not in the era of the healing service. Something in me tells me that there is a greater blessing. And that is exactly what he told the prophet. He said there is something more than this. There is something more than water baptism in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. After water baptism, if we truly receive the spirit, it should give an hunger for something greater. And the prophet said something tells me my inheritance is across Jordan. He said as many as feels that way come over with me. Let us cross this Jordan. So Jordan means death. That means we are going to pass through the death. Die to the things of the world. Die to the church. Die to creeds. Die to dogma. And be resurrected out of denominationalism into the glorious age of the bride of Jesus Christ. Where our opinion no longer counts. Where our beliefs no longer count. It is the word and the word alone. Where we say, be it unto me according to your word. We are every man's word is a lie. And only the word of God be the truth. Glory to God. This is exactly where these brethren were. In Exodus chapter 19. And what church? The Lord actually descended. Amen. The Bible said he descended in a what? Thick cloud. When he descended, he descended as a pillar of fire. Into the cloud. And there were smokes everywhere. There were blastings. There were rockings everywhere. But it didn't consume Moses. Moses said for 33, Abraham said for 33 years I fellowship with the pillar of fire. He never got used to it. Amen. Every experience leaves him shaking. Amen. But it never consumed him. Oh glory to God. This pillar of fire message only consumes sin. It consumes hypocrisy. It consumes unrighteousness. It consumes indifference. It consumes prejudice. It consumes complex. It consumes fornication. It consumes adultery. It consumes lying. It consumes all works of the flesh. It exposes them. 
he drives them out from the camp of the believers but it attracts holiness purity joy faith long suffering loving kindness blessings unspeakable you love him this morning so friends he actually came down and when he came down he told Moses set boundary before he came he said set boundary there's a limit to which the fivefold goes in this matter the people who were attracted to come within the range of the boundary were not even ordinary people. They were all priests. He said, tell them to come. Amen. Yeah. And some renowned people. He said, but you and Aaron come up a bit higher because Aaron is the high priest. A type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. So figuratively, the high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one that takes Moses into the cloud of himself. Are you catching it? All right. Then Moses got to a range. He entered into the cloud. What is this cloud experience for? This is what is important to me. It was in the cloud of Exodus 19 that God gave the message of that hour. Did you hear me? I better read something here to prove that. To establish that to you. You love him, church. It was in that cloud that the message of that hour came. The prophet called the message that came from that cloud as the seals. This is what I wanted to be patient to read. If you can bear with me. Let's read. In the message, the unveiling of God, paragraph 299, the unveiling of God, 1964, 14th of June, the prophet said, and think of it, the same pillar of fire that come upon those men that wrote the Bible is the same pillar of fire here today interpreting the Bible. Amen. How we thank him for that. Same. What a comfort. What identification. I'm so glad to be identified in that. I don't know what to do. I would rather be identified in that than all the Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterian, Lutheran, and all the rest of them identified in that where the Shekinah glory and revelation lays. Amen. The pillar of fire appearing visibly among us. Identifying that the message is right like it did at Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is Exodus 19, 20. Dear from, is that right? Like it did where? On Mount Sinai. Remember, watch this. Before the true message come forth, Moses preached and led them out of Egypt. Ah, are you spiritual? Can you be me on it? Before the true message oh remember before the true message come forth Moses preached and he led them out of Egypt. So the message of that exodus hadn't come when Moses led them out of Egypt, what did he lead them by? He led them by instructions, by signs, and by wonders. The healing service. The first pool. The second pool. He brought them out by it. Amen. But certainly those two pools cannot take them into the promise and keep them in their land of inheritance. Are you catching it? Now listen. He said, but there, before the real commandment was laid down. Mm -hmm. What did he call the real commandment? The seals was brought in. So the first exodus had their seals. Oh, church. 
Oh, bride of Jesus Christ. The first product had their seals. Before the seals was brought down, what did God do? God came down before the people and proof that Moses was sent from him. Isn't that the scripture we have read? Amen. He said, behold, I come down in what? Thick clouds. That I may prove you before the people and the people might believe you forever. So you will agree I'm not preaching outside of the message of the hour. Are you catching it? You must understand the program of your own Easter. You must understand the program of your own redemption. Amen. God in the message Christ is the mystery of God revealed. The prophet said everything God wanted to do, he has shown it through types and shadows throughout the entire scriptures. He said, and proof that Moses was sent from him in a pillar of fire that Moses said he had seen in a bush and talked to him. So that same pillar of fire of Exodus 3 came upon the mountain in a thick cloud. So Moses entered into the cloud to fellowship with the pillar of fire. And what was the product, outcome of the fellowship? The giving of the true message for that hour. The seals of that hour that we put legitimacy to everything Moses had spoken about from the beginning till the end, even beyond Moses. It will make it so true unto them until after Moses leaves, they will keep believing it. They will keep saying Moses said. That was what Joshua couldn't but said Moses said. He even divided the land by Moses' search. Come on, church. Why you are not with Abraham's search? Can you ever get into your inheritance without Abraham saying? Your problem is that you think it was the words of William Abraham. William Abraham was a man. But God, God came through him. He veiled God to interpret the word. The interpretation is sure. And the message it brought is correct. And it was until it was not until that time that everything Moses said was certified by God. It was the open seals that certified the entire message to us as the perfect truth. Because when the seals became open, things we need to pull back upon to adjust to correct, to put in a better light. We did. That is not my word. That is the words of the prophet. He went back and taught correctly the 70 weeks of Daniel. He brought the truth of marriage and divorce correctly. He went back into the four us riders and showed to us that this rider, white horse rider is not Christ. He's Satan in his deceptive form. So we need the cloud to certify the entire message so that we can believe it forever. So the bride will not be perfected by signs and wonders. Their redemption is not that. It only attracted them to see what is going on. When they came around, the, the true message of perfection was given. And that is why we hold tenaciously today. To what the word says. It might be instruction. It might be counsel. Even if it's an advice. Everything Paul said. He told the church. He said all, it, all scripture was given. By what? By inspiration. And it's profitable. Amen. Including that which Paul said. This is I not the Lord. It formed part of all scripture. If any man took it for his opinion and disobeyed it, oh God, you will incur the wrath of God. So whether he said, this is I, not the Lord, or he said, that which I received from the Lord, it formed part of all scripture. That supersede your opinion. That supersede your belief. That you must accept it. That you must accept. Because Moses was vindicated by God to be believed forever. If that was what happened in the first Exodus, let's see our Exodus. 
You are happy. You didn't take offense with the first one. Don't take offense with the last one. You are the generation that will not take offense. Because you are not prone to offense. You are prone to believing. Blessed are those who are not offended. Have I shown you a pattern? Have I shown you the program of God? Have I proven from the scripture? As a prophet gradually not be bringing it to our day. Let's follow him. He told us that what Moses got, the true message he got, after a mighty revival, was what? Was the seals. And that seals were the Ten Commandments and the expansion of it into over 600 ordinances and statutes. Do you know, to even the building of the tabernacle, the specification, they were all given in that fellowship. Moses never came down until 40 years, brethren. 40 days, brethren. So it wasn't a small time fellowship. It was a real fellowship. Without food, without water. Being taken care of supernaturally. In the realms of glory bright. We are no man, we are no fivefold. Could approach unto. You love him? Then here we come. In this last exodus. Which was to be the substance. The great signs and wonders and supernaturals. Have also taken us far. Till 1962. Glory to God. Somewhere around 1962. The Lord told the prophet. By a vision to forewarn the church. Because he saw a vision of a blast. That's what says is the time was all about. The prophet left it finish that message presuming he couldn't bring you exactly what the blast meant. He gave many postulations. But you see, if God gives a sound it's got to be certain. Amen. Amen. So all that taught the prophet was to wait for God's appointed time when he will reveal the certainty of all that he had seen. You love him? Then in February 1963 Four to six months later, just what he saw in the vision, like him picking a boss from off of his trousers, before witnesses like Gene Norman and Fred Sotman, if I have the names right. Amen? Fred Sotman, if I have their names right. Then he saw circling, some white something, circling down. And they turn out to be angels. Amen? Amen. February 1963. You can even, I'm going to read a few things about that cloud. It is important I do because if the cloud that God came down, God's intention by it was to make people believe Moses forever, then we must certify that the cloud that we receive is genuine. Otherwise, our soul and our life hangs in the balance. Because today, we see a lot of generation of people, generation of mixed multitudes, I have no apology for saying that, that are coming up with contradictions, battling at the mystery cloud. I want to take the battle back to them this morning. But we are not going to be vulgar. We'll prove it with facts. I've taken it from scriptural points. Tracing it for you, church. Is that right? Do I have the witness that we have seen it from the scripture? And do I have the witness that the prophet is beginning to connect it to what happened in our day? Is that Moses brought them that far? But the true message that will take care of them in that exodus hasn't been given yet. Oh, glory to God. And they call that message the seals. My goodness. How else could the world be this plain? He called it the seals. So the first exodus had their seals that took care of them in the journey. That showed them the tabernacle specification. You aren't going to come to full stature today. In this spiritual temple God is building without the seals. 
the earlier you start embracing the messages that came out of the experience of the seals, the better it is for your life. Your stature is not what you are going to walk yourself into. Your stature is a message. The prophet in the message stature of a perfect man, he said when he say hard, he doesn't mean it like literally like that. It's a quotation. The addition is you taking more of the word. And more of the word begin to blossom in your life. This is your Easter church of the living God. What we release the materials is the seals. Amen. So instead of looking for materials, look for the seals. When you see what the seals unfolded into and you embrace the revelation that came out of the seals, automatically the material is building in your life. Church, the program couldn't be more plainer. From the commandments that was given came several ordinances and statutes. Thereof, from their experience, came the building of the tabernacle in the wilderness. Came all the specification. Came even the specification of the Levite and the Levitical orders and the priesthood, even to their garment, to their services, and to their offerings. One encounter, Moses got everything complete before he came back. That the people might believe him what? Forever. So everybody adds their portion. So this encounter of the prophet with the cloud is important for us because India lays everything complete to put perfection on the messages before then and what we will do after then. So, what did you see? He saw seven angels came down, whirling out circled like a light. And when they came down, they took him up in the pyramid of themselves. Amen. Amen. Because it was high up that Moses got the revelation from. So they took him. The prophet said, the revelation of the word only known to them. So is God of fellowship in the midst of those angels. In order to get the word, the message, the true message, as the Bible said, for that hour in our own exodus. And this was I when they brought him back after the encounter. How long it was, I don't know. They brought him back with a charge to go back where? East. He was in the West Arizona where he had that experience. They said, go back East Jeffersonville to go and declare a new day. And he went back and for seven nights he was having angelic visitation to do what? To open the seals. Are we to get the church of the living God? That was what he said. That was what happened. And this experience came out of where? It came out of the cloud. When these angels were going back they formed a cloud. A ring of mystery. Let me read what people said. This is not message of the hour. This was, which you can google yourself. This was an account. Amen. Of witnesses that have been passed down from generation to generation. I have the original Luke magazine that carried this May 17, 19th edition of 1963. I have it in my house. The original magazine that carried that event. Now, I was going through search Google, or what do you call it, to even see if in the internet, if on the search, I will see anything like that. So, I searched mystery clouds in history. And they brought out 10. And out of the ten, this one was number five or number six. In the ascending, what do you call it? In the, in, the, in the order of events that has happened. And this is what they said about the ring of mystery. In the closing hours of February, you can go through this in the wonderlist.com. It is not a message website. Amen. It is just 
people who are gathering facts of history. They said in the closing hours of February 1963, the residents of Arizona are reported to have seen a mysterious cloud formation that in scientific term defied all rational explanation. I'm coming for backsliders who are attacking this cloud, but I told you I will bring my case in the most humble, holy way. We are not going to go vulgar like they have done. We are not of the same material. But no amount of vulgarity and attack can take this blessing from us. Every article of redemption in every exodus had always come under attack. They attacked the Red Sea. They said it never happened. It was just a dry land, a bunch of reed that Moses, you know, took people through. Friends, they attacked. They attacked, uh, they also attacked what again? They also attacked the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. They said he was not virgin born. The day they attacked that and 500 preachers denied virgin birth. It wouldn't change my position on virgin birth. If you take the Red Sea out of the experience of the first exodus, that means they never came out. There was no redemption. If you take the cloud out of that experience, that means they never entered into anywhere else because nothing to take care of them. So if you take the virgin birth out of redemption in the second exodus, no redemption for you, no redemption for me. If you take the cloud out of these last days, it shows we are not better than denominations. But it was from the cloud that we received the message that separated us as a peculiar treasure, as a holy people that proved to us that we are the gene seed, further spiritual gene that gave us the open word. You can't take it from us regardless of what you say. Thank you for putting it on the board. Let's read it together. This is not message people. This is just ordinary people gathering fact of history. This is archaeology work. Amen. We are not following a cunningly devised fable. Church of the living God, if you are still having doubt in the message, having come this far, there is little hope for you. Listen to me. He said, defied all rational explanation. The cloud was reported to be 48 kilometers. That is 30 miles across. Wide. It was such a large. That was why it stretches from Tucson to Phoenix into Mexico. That was how wide. They could see it from Mexico because it was so high also. So wide. And 41 kilometer, 26 miles high in a bright, dark, cloudless sky. According to witness, the cloud suddenly appeared to have been drawn by an unseen entity. Hey, I'm coming for you backsliders who are saying this is the smoke of aeroplane. I'm going to prove it by science and I'm going to prove it by fact of history. Just give me a few minutes. By fact of history that you are a liar, you are a backslider and you are a blasphemer. Don't keep company with these folks lest you partake in their sin. Some of you are having sympathy for them for whatever reason. Don't be a partaker of their sin. Let their sin be only upon their head. Let me say one thing categorically clear. Brother, the, the Lord Jesus said, I did things and you call it Beelzebub. He said, I will forgive you for it. He said, but the spirit of truth when he returns in the last days and he, do, he does things one word against it will never be forgiven on this earth or in the world to come. Those of you who entered into the ministry and think that your ministry can only survive by attacking the prophet or the message of the hour. Oh, I, I pity your ministry. I pity you. I feel, for your, I feel for your destruction because it will come. I'm not cursing. 
I'm speaking the truth. Every idle word, the Bible said against the spirit, will not be forgiven. Be very, very careful who you company with, who you keep friendship with. Friendship must not be at all cost. Are you listening to me? Cause be any friendship where the word of God is at stake. These are ordinary men testifying. These are not Christians. They said, according to witnesses, people who saw that thing, they said the cloud suddenly appeared to have been drawn by an unseen entity. So it wasn't like a gradual and it's forming. Couldn't the seven angels have done that? Did you catch that? All of a sudden, pew, they just saw it. Oh, glory. By an unseen entity and was visible for several minutes. Smoke disappears. Smoke have no retention. Smoke are like vapor. They move away very fast. Hallelujah. But this one stayed. So it formed for several minutes to leave a witness to this art that God came in the thickness of a cloud to prove his messenger that we might believe what he brought forever as John the Baptist was sent to forerun the first coming of Christ you are sent with a message that we forerun his second coming until he physically appears in the sky to take his children home we must believe the message forever Listen, curious citizens immediately flooded the University of Arizona Institute of Atmospheric Physics for answers. But the scientists were amateurs as well. Didn't the prophet say they were looking for answers? Did you not read it on the pages of the message? So did the prophet tell a lie? He told the truth? Amen. If he said this way, if he said that way, it was intentional. In order to take care of those who are prone to offense. But the believers are not prone to offense. Some people we are saying, he said he was there on that day when it appeared. Why? And he was not there. The first public comment of the prophet on this thing, message of come follow me. He said these things happened either two days before or two days after I was there. Then in the standing of the gap, when he has done his research to know when, he said these things happened when the angels who came down were going back. So how long it took them to go back and flood that thing and keep their visibility, it's up to him. Amen. But he said right under where that thing appeared was where we were two days before. So where did he say that he was there when it was happening? It is the way you were reading it. You never read with revelation. I challenge you to bring it where he said so. He said I was under it. Amen. Under it meaning where that thing appeared when they draw the geographical location of where the prophet stood with the angels it was right under it. But you see if you are prone to offense and if you are prone to contention, every little, little thing gathers momentum for you. He said this. He does this. It, because you are just looking for fault. You are seeking occasion. Many of you have contentious spirits. It's a demon. You pick at words. The prophet said, take me for what I mean. Not sometimes what I say. It's still a quotation of the word. But this is another thing that intrigued me. The article writer said, unsurprisingly, in other words, without surprise, a tele-evangelist called and confessed to have been visited by seven angels who made the cloud as they flew back to their heavenly abode. 
Did you hear that? Amen. Because they couldn't explain. Amen. The rate at which this thing formed. Because they couldn't explain the height at which this thing is. They couldn't explain the wideness of this thing. It was beyond scientific explanation. When somebody now offered a clue, they said they are not surprised. In other words, they accepted it as a supernatural occurrence. We are in backsliders. I am not done yet. Amen. I am not done yet. I want to bring another one. They told you, some of you dock your head on the internet. They told you, you see, he said, I, I'm trying to listen to many uh, so that I can take my opinion. Let me tell you, who are the people to form an opinion on the prophet for you? Who is the backslider that will form an opinion on the prophet? Are you okay? What is their call? What is their vindication? Why are you tossed to and fro? Why isn't there anything that settled it for you? Amen. Amen. Could it be the messenger wasn't sent to you? To those whom, for, to, for whom he is sent, they don't doubt. They don't look for anybody to validate the prophet. No, 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 no. The validation of the prophet comes from God. And I'm showing you his validation. Even in Exodus 19. The prophet said throughout the entire Bible I can show you the seventh seal. Here is it brethren. I've debunked it for you. He never said it was there the same day they took the picture. I've debunked that for you. Say that two days before or two days after. First public comment. Later on he said it was the angels that formed it when they were going back after their message. Amen. To which, to which wonderlist.com Amen. History researchers attested to. They said the televangelists said this was what happened. They are not surprised. Because that event was too supernatural. For it to have any other explanation apart from that. Science couldn't explain it. Think about that for a minute. Then latter day backsliders are coming to tell you it is the smoke of aeroplane. I want to bring another fact. We are in the court this morning. How many are enjoying this court session? I'm bringing another fact. Now, this is from Time Magazine. For me to have a position, because if the prophet told me that I'm in Exodus 19, amen, that's exactly what he was saying. That I'm in Exodus 19 by the mystery cloud. Then I must be sure what came out of there, I could put my life, my entire bet on it. Now backsliders have come to tell us that it is the smoke of aeroplanes. Is that right? Whereas in the message, the prophet said it was beyond the height of aeroplane. How many ever read it in the message? He said it was beyond the height of where aeroplane could fly. And even till today, I want to posit, I want to submit that it is still beyond the height of aeroplane, despite our advancements. I went back to do a research. How high do planes actually fly in the 50s? And here is what I found. I would like to read a little. Amen. 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 Oh, we have to enjoy this a little. Over 42,000 planes take flight in the U.S. every day. With 5,000 in the sky at any given time, according to the Federal Aviation Administration, coordinating that many arrivals, departures, and... Okay. <laughs> Here is what to know about how high plane really fly. Listen to this, church. One reason that planes cruise above the clouds 
is so they can fly fast. The higher airplanes climb, the thinner the air gets. And the more efficiently they can fly because of less resistance in the atmosphere. With these larger jets, when they take off from here, port, their first job is essentially to get out and get as high as possible, as quickly as possible. Commercial aircraft typically, typically fly between 31,000 to 28,000 feet today. Those of you who have boarded planes traveling overseas can attest to that. They don't go past that. And that is just about 5.9 to 7.2 miles. Today, huh? I unusually reach their cruising altitude in the first 10 minutes of a flight. According, okay, of a flight. Planes can fly much higher than this altitude, but that can present safety issues. Flying higher means it will take a long time to return to a safe altitude in case of an emergency, like rapid decompression. It also isn't the most efficient use of fuel to fly that high in the first place. He says, since planes can fly at a lower altitude with the assistance of wind. Are we together? I want you to continue read, reading that later. I will give you the side. I want to see in 1958. They told us in the 50s that planes don't fly beyond 19,000 feet, which is less than four miles. History said so. That it was in 1958 they introduced Jet and Concord who could fly a little higher than that and they don't go past 38,000 feet. They haven't shown us in history which one went past 40,000. Except you are doing rocket launching or something like that. Are you here with me? Now, for a smoke to form today, it will form around 38,000 feet, which is like 7.2 miles of line. But do you know what this said? We had this, the height of this cloud, 26 miles high. The cloud was higher than the height of a plane by about four times. That is about 123,000 feet. So where will it become a smoke of an aeroplane? And even at this time, we are saying, history said, as that before 1958, no plane flies higher than 19,000 feet, which is less than four miles. But the cloud formed at 26 miles high. Do you see why science said they, become an, they became an amateur to explain what happened? They found no answers. It defied all logic. So can you get it out of your head? Backsliders and blasphemers. That this cloud I'm seeing here is not the smoke of an aeroplane. The smoke cannot set and retain itself on the same spot in thickness for several minutes. It is your backsliding condition inspired by Satan in your heart. Amen. That makes you talk ill of a God-given vindication to prove his servant forever that we might believe the word that he gave forever. But you see, every falsehood we have sympathizers. God has allowed that to take care of some people, but not us. No matter the level of opposition, the believer is moving on. The prophet foretold it before it happened. Amen. God warned the church. We saw the warning in Exodus 19. So as to prepare for the event. Amen. 
And the prophet said the event they were being worked for is to bring the true message of that exodus. And from the cloud came the Ten Commandments. Came the ordinances. Six hundred and something ordinances. From the cloud came the Levitical orders. From the cloud came the specification of the tabernacle. The building plan. And all the materials that we go into it. To build a total message. For a perfect exodus. Thanks be to God. Let's see what came out from the cloud. Let's see what came out from this cloud. That they are trying to deny us of. Are you ready to see what came out from the cloud? You will see why the devil is fighting the cloud. And why the people are yielding themselves. Amen. As a servant to Satan. Amen. You love the Lord. You love the Lord. If you love him. Rejoice in him. Oh glory to God. In the message the third exodus. Let's start from here. I'm winding down now. But you must get this. Amen. In the message, the third exodus. The prophet said, paragraph 265. The second exodus, he brought a prophet anointed, which was his son, God prophet. Moses said he would be a prophet and had the pillar of fire and done signs and wonders. And that same prophet said, Whosoever believeth in me, the works that I do, will he do also. And there he promised the same thing in the Exodus in the last days. And he cannot change it. And by scientific proof, by the witness of the Spirit, by the works of the Spirit, we see it today. The great pillar of fire moving among us. And the signs and wonders and of the resurrection of Jesus Christ calling the people from denominationalism into the presence of Jesus Christ to live going to a land there is this no mistake friends amen it's not what i'm saying i'm just your brother but it's what god is proving to you what makes it the truth same pillar of fire he used for the other two is brought it among you today and prove it by scientific as you know life magazine Packed it last month over there. How many was there? And had me tell about that. What happened before it did? I think about everyone in the church. There it is. It's coming to the cloud again. They don't know what it is all about. The science are trying to. Did we read it now? Did we read their research? Amen. Anybody got a picture of it? Called in a cloud. We have it here. 26 miles here high. In the shape of a pyramid. Seven angels represent in there. Brought back and brought you the word of. What did they bring you? The message of the hour. They brought you the seals. Just as they brought Moses the seals. For his own day. Under the inspiration. He tells you these hours that you are coming and living in. The spiritual mind we pick that right now and get it. What is it? It is an it is an so what called out our exodus? The ring of mystery. God came down in a thick cloud to give us the message of exodus. The prophet said the mystery cloud is an exodus. It's an exodus calling out. Oh, come on, church. Let's get one more before we go. If he calls it the word of God, what word did he give? What word did he give? This day the scripture is fulfilled. 29 February 1965, paragraph, beginning from paragraph 176. What word did he give us? If he gave us the seals, what word did he give us? <laughs> Amen. What are the contents of the seals? Amen. I'm going to read it for you. He helped us to know who Satan is. The white horse rider. Is that right? He helped us to know this, the, the, the red horse rider. He helped us to know the black horse rider. We know what? The pale horse rider. We know souls under the altar. Oh friends, we know the tribulation judgment. 
We know all the wars and the epidemics and the pandemics. We are loosed under the sixth seal. And all the calamities that are befalling man came under the sixth seal. Then he also told us the seventh seal. And he said the fold of it is the seven thunders. So the seven thunders revelation came out of where? Came out of the thick cloud. Divinely revealed mystery truth. That we do a literal work of changing us. Let us see the unfolding content. Amen. I've given part of the content. Let the prophet give the rest. Okay. Why they are looking for that. Paragraph 176. This day this scripture is fulfilled. He said that morning. When those seven angels come down. Amen. And blasted the earth. Did they blast the earth? They blasted the earth. Amen. And rocks flew everywhere. Just exactly as it happened in Exodus 19. You know when it happened in Exodus 19? Do you know God achieved his aim? Do you know what the people said after the encounter? They said, God, don't speak to us. Is that right? Church, are we together? The saints in the world. He said, they said, God, don't speak to us directly. Let Moses speak to us. Because they found the voltage too high for them to absorb. And any voltage that comes from a power generation center is always too high for any man to absorb. Are you following me? This is why they give you transformers on your streets or in your houses. In other words, the transformer absorbs the voltage and steps it down and begins to regulate it and give it in the content that you are able to receive. That transformer is the messenger of the hour. The prophet of God who absorbed of the energy of the voltage. Who kept some truth until you arrived to receive it. He knew marriage and divorce two years before he preached it. He said if we preach it earlier, it will, it will destroy, it will scatter. God keep those things in that earthen vessel and he preserve it there until the people are matured. To be able to accept it, we thank God for our transformer that is given into us in regulated content so that our houses, our temple is not destroyed by what was sent to redeem you and I. The people never wanted to hear God directly again. They said, let God speak only to Moses and you Moses speak to us. What was God's intention to achieve that? He said that they might listen to you and hear you forever. That morning when those seven angels come down and blasted the earth and rock flew everywhere, seven angels stood there and said, return back to Jebusoville. Hallelujah. From where you come from, for the what? For the seven seals of the seven mysteries will be opened. Oh, Hallelujah. Here we are today. Church, here we are today. Understanding serpent seed. So the full revelation of serpent seed never came in 1958. It ran through to the opening of the seals. Here we are today. Understanding seven seals. In few days, if God willing, we will understand the correctness of marriage and divorce. Things you need to teach the church. To place it positionally. Not by your thoughts, your church tradition, or doctrine or sense, but by the revealed word. To build a total church, a total people, who will know how to approach every situation by the counsel of the word. You are ignoring that and chasing shadows. You aren't going to walk anybody up to come to full stature. These are the things that will bring them to that stature. The supernatural ingredients that came from the cloud. And all these things, amen, that God has opened every seal, the mystery since the foundation. Ah, bring it up, church. Since the foundation of the world. And we've been in joy, the presence of his blessings. That is true. This day, this scripture is fulfilled. Hallelujah. Is that what he says? Is that what he said? Is that what we said? God bless you. Let me get one more. And we can close on that. 
Amen. That is our own deliverance. That is our own redemption. That is our long ancient words preserved. Walking upon the atoms of our body. That gives us answer to every devil's questions. He said the entire seals have been opened. And the Bible has perfectly been revealed. For those who can see. If you can see it, this is it. Amen. And that is your redemption. That is your salvation. This is your deliverance church. Amen. Amen. Brother Bram called it. He called it the little stone. Amen. I'm trying to see if I could get that. Okay, let's continue reading this one. Ah, let's continue reading it. There's a blessing here. Come on, come on. I've not even finished it. This day, this scripture is fulfilled. Paragraph now. We started from paragraph 176. Let's move to 179. We reach 178. Let's read on. Brother Fred Sotman and Brother Jean Norman and I standing there. Witnesses. Three is a witness. Amen. What was God doing to Moses on Exodus 19? He was adopting his messenger to a position of hear ye him. That they might believe him for... Did he do that to our Lord Jesus Christ? In the second exodus. In the third exodus, it must be the same thing. So what was taking place on Mount Sunset? Another adoption. Hear ye him. Said, this is why he took witnesses. Amen. Three is a witness. Like at the top, like at up on the top of the mountain. Peter, James, and John. Is the prophet saying it himself? Don't be skeptical. Accept the reveal word. To give witness, stood there and watched it when it happened and seen it done. There it is, hanging in the sky. You see it again? So far, there is no humidity, no moisture, or nothing to make a fog. How could they come there? It was the angels of God returning back after their message. This day, that prophecy has been fulfilled in our midst. This day, this scripture has been fulfilled. Watch, seven seals has been opened. The one wind is to the west coast. Now don't miss it like they did back yonder. Don't miss it like they did back yonder. Do you know God also vindicated this? Not by just the vision of the blast. In SARS, is this the time? He also vindicated it by Junior Jackson's dream. Some say he didn't have the dream. Some say he didn't. How, why did you wait for Junior Jackson to pass away before you start speaking nonsense? Where was Junior Jackson when the prophet was referring to him? Or are they all rebellious collaborators or falsehood? Oh, you are a backslider for speaking Tommy Roach. For speaking nonsense. You are filling up the cup of your fathers. Generation of mixed multitudes. Hallelujah. I close with Junior Jackson. Junior Jackson saw a period stone. Amen. On that many things were written on it. And brethren gathered and the prophet was fellowshipping around those things. And everybody was rejoicing. Amen. And when they were settling down thinking that was all of it. The prophet took a crowbar to do what? knock off the edge and inside that thing which is inside brother Abraham connected it to the opening of the entire thing is there in the pages of the word it said that inside was revealed a stone looking so innocent and precious as if no light has ever flashed upon it initially it thought it was something outside the bible amen but the spirit of the lord came to correct him that no revelation could come outside of the word. Then he realized that it was the truth in the Bible upon which nobody has attempted to bring revelation. Did you catch it, George? And he told the generation that were with him to do what? To watch and look on this. Until he does what? Until he comes back. And he started going what? West. Are you catching it? Yes. West was sunset. 
West was where? Oh, hallelujah. West was where we have the encounter with the angels in order to bring the thick cloud. And as he was going, I want to show you something dangerous. As I close. West was where he had that encounter with the angels. Amen. He was going up down the hill, down the hill until he disappeared. When he disappeared, the people we are told to look started looking away with a corner eye. And they began to ask themselves, how far is he? Where has he gone? What is he doing? Until a whole lot of them, many, did what? Many left. Many turned their head away and disobeyed the instruction. Are you catching it? When they disobeyed the instruction, the prophet said they left that place with their private interpretation of what they thought that meant. They never waited for the messenger to return to bring the truth of it. Listen to me, church. Watch it carefully. Now, years later, the prophet referred back to that dream. And he said, many people have begun to say things and teach things today that I am not responsible for. He said, do you remember Junius Jackson dream? When I told them to wait, they were coming up with theories and great interpretations that looked like it, but it was not exactly it. And the only thing it succeeded in doing is to raise giants again. A generation of old fighters who started proselyting and making denominations out of the message of the hour, knowing that the message cannot be denominated, they unconsciously and deceptively took people out of the message when they thought they were in the message. If you have ever been caught in such error, your redemption is to throw away those opinions and come and embrace the message and start all over. Then the prophet said, do you remember the golden calves came? Do you know before Moses came out of the cloud, there was a generation that said, as for this Moses, we don't know what has become of him. And they used the force of Jezebelism to intimidate the high priest to submission, to do what? To erect a golden calf. Those things are shadows. They are playing out perfectly today. Hallelujah. And until an high priest said, Behold, Israelite, your God that took you, brought you out of Egypt. This is why people became high dogs today. Amen. People can die for their pastors, even if it's contrary to the message. Because as far as they are concerned, he is the one that has the understanding of the message. There is no private interpretation or private understanding to this. It is true we shall make more sense to it. That is the job of the fivefold, but not one person. God will give grace here. He will give grace here. He will give grace here. Church of the living God, you must raise your head above the fanatism of this revival to be a peculiar treasure. Take the message in its simplicity. The seals have been opened. The entire world has been revealed. Feed on these eternal things. It will change you from glory to glory and present you as a total masterpiece, a full stature. That is your history. That is your deliverance. That is your resurrection. That is your blessing. Resurrected out of dark death, denominationalism. Both self denomination and general denomination. Addition and suppression is denomination. Throw it out and take the message in its purity. God bless you.
to God. Hallelujah. Give him praise in this place. Give him glory. Oh, how many know that right now? Oh, in the good times and bad, oh, you are on your throne. Well, and you are God. One more time. You are God. Well, you are God alone. Hallelujah. From before time began. God, hallelujah. Oh, you are on your throne. Oh, and right now, and right now, oh, in the good times and bad, oh, you are on your throne. Well, you are God alone. Now give him praise right now. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus, we feel your presence. Spirit, come and speak to our hearts. Come and anoint us. Oh, the word has been spoken. Let the miraculous take place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, he's unchangeable. Unshakable. Unstoppable, that's what you are. How many know that? Oh, he's unchangeable, oh, unshakable, oh, unstoppable, that's what you are. One more time, well, you are God alone. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. How many appreciate God's servant today? Oh, how many appreciate the word of God spoken today? Oh, hallelujah. Let every hand be lifted. Let every voice, hallelujah, with a loud voice, give him praise, give him honor, give him glory. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Even so. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Hallelujah. Glory. Even so, yes, Lord, take your bride away. Yes, Lord. Oh, how my soul longs to be with you. Oh, yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we feel it. Even so, even right now, or oh, even so, oh, come, Lord Jesus, come, oh, well, even so, come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, oh, with all our hearts we cry, even so, come and take your bride. by the music plays. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. 
Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. How many feel His presence today? Oh, what an anointing we feel coming up out of the Word of God. What is it to make it live, to make it manifest? Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. At this time, you may want to have a, a tithes your offering being picked up. And as you get ready for that, amen. Hallelujah. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. Amen. Let's get a key for that. Oh, hallelujah. And just bow our heads as we continue in reverence. Amen. As we feel his anointing. Amen. Let's just bow our heads and pray one more time. Heavenly Father, we pause now to pick up the tithes your offering. Lord, we feel so blessed today. To hear what we hear and to see what we see, Lord. Or to put every soul into action. Lord, may you bless each heart here today, Lord. And bless them as they give and tithe your offering. May you provide for them. Bless your people. Bless your ministry around the world. Lord, Father, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I worship you. Hallelujah. Almighty. God, oh yes, oh there is none like you, oh I worship you, I worship you, oh, oh Prince of Peace, that is what I long to do, oh your hands if you can. Oh, say, Almighty God, there is none, there is none like you. Oh, I worship you, I worship you. Oh, Prince of Peace, yes, Lord, for that is what I long to I gave you praise, oh yes, for you are my righteousness, oh, oh, oh I worship you. There is none. Oh, there is none. There is none like you. Oh, yeah. Oh, there is none like you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you love and appreciate the Lord today? What a time in his presence. Amen. We thank God for these things. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's just bow our heads now as we'd like to close out this service officially in a, with a prayer. And ask God continued blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's bow our heads now. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, how we thank you, Father, for speaking to our hearts today, Lord. Lord, we can never thank you enough, oh God, Father, for your goodness, for your mercies, Lord. And even your love gifts that you have given to us, Lord. Lord, in this way. And so, Father, we all want to thank you, Lord, for your servant, Reverend Adelo Dune, Lord, Father, who 
ministered so richly to your people, Father. Lord, by your word, Lord, may anointing follow him, Lord. May presence be upon your people today. We thank you for your word, Lord. We pray a blessing, Lord. Bless his family, Lord. Bless his household, Lord, Father. Bless the, the ministry, Lord, there, Father, in, in Nigeria, Lord, Father. Lord, may I continue to anoint them and inspire them afresh. Bless your people around the world, Lord. All the hearts, Lord, those seen and unseen among us who've been touched by your service today. Lord, may I bless each one, Lord, Father. May I anoint them. May your presence be with them, Lord, Father. And Lord, may you raise us up for such a time as this, Lord. May you raise up a bride around the world, Lord, Father. Lord, that would truly be a manifestation of the prophet's word. May you bless your people, Lord, as we leave, Lord, but surely not from your presence. Go with us, Lord, and anoint us and keep us, Lord, Father. Lord, eat only as you can. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. And amen and amen. God richly bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Amen. Let's get us one more song as we get ready to shout and close out. Amen. This joy that I have. Oh, well, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, well, this joy that I have. Oh, well, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy that I have. Oh, the world didn't give it to me. Given. The world can't take it away. Oh, singing this joy that I have. Oh, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, I know this joy that I have. Oh, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, now this joy that I have. Oh, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. You may have your seats. Amen. We're dismissed. Hallelujah. Ushers you come. Amen. God bless you. Oh, this joy that I have. Oh, the world didn't give it to me. No, this joy that I have. Oh, the world didn't give it to me. No, the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Oh, this peace, this peace that I have. Hallelujah. The world didn't give it to me. Couldn't give this to me, no, this peace that I have. Oh, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah.